uh, I'll be the tour guide today of the content. Um, one of the things I like about the, the new Apricot upgrade is the linking buttons. The add and new for linking in between records is a lot more prominent. Um, so I'm a fan of that. I'll let um, Heather jump in and share what she loves. Um, my favorite color is teal and I love that there's way more teal throughout the interface that just generally makes me happy. How about you, Janae Teal? Well, they did that for me. I said, hey, Apricot, if I have to work in you so much, can you please at least make it teal? And they listened. Um, JK, I don't really love it that much. Um, but I do love the new interface for the client document folder. I just feel like it's easier for folks who are looking to see what they've filled out for clients. So I would say that that's my new favorite piece of the, of the new Apricot. Go for it, Sarah. Well, you're on mute, Sarah. Yes, um, I'm sorry, I'm admitting and unmuting. My favorite is the new attendance tracker that you get to learn about today because, oh my gosh, so much easier. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for pumping us up. That was actually originally what I put too, but you know, wanted to create variety. <laughs> sorry, I stole it. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, we love apricot over here. So as far as where we are on our timeline, as y'all know, this is the fifth of seven sessions. Um, in two weeks, I will be taking us through all things apricot connect links, also known as intake forms in apricot. Those are the external facing forms to enter in data external to the database, but still be stored in your apricot. Um, and also referral functionalities in Apricot. So more to come in a couple weeks. And then our last session um, will be Janae and a quick update. So this session will be covering BSK semi-annual reporting best practices. And uh, we have moved that last session from July 15th to July 1st. You all should have gotten a calendar update with that change, but we did that to be sensitive. We know many of our clients are also submitting Help Me Grow reporting on the 15th. So we wanted to move it up to the first to better be able to support you and not coincide with your other reporting requirements, if that's the case. So um, I know we're all excited for that session and we're all gonna learn a lot from Janae. So housekeeping, y'all have heard it a million times, probably at this point, but um, please mute yourself. If you're um, not talking just to minimize background noise, please, we might mute you if we hear some noise on your end. Um, if you have questions, please use the chat. Janae will be monitoring the chat today. Um, if you have more questions, and we don't have time at the end of today's session, please do come to office hours. Um, one other scheduling update, is, and it's reflected in the Connect portal as well. We moved the uh, Tuesday session, uh, office hour session to Wednesday the 16th at 10 a.m. Um, as our staff will be out of office on a retreat um, on Tuesday. So office hours are now Wednesday and Thursday remains the same. We know office hours haven't been largely utilized, but we're still honoring them. We're still gonna be there to answer any apricot related questions. Please come hang out with us. We can talk about the new upgrades to the software, learn together, and um, we're just excited to be able to support you however we can. Okay, so um, Heather is gonna launch a poll for you all. It's two questions, the first, do you or someone you supervise regularly take attendance? And if yes, how confident do you feel with this process in Apricot? Well, for those of you not confident, very glad you're here today. Wait a few more moments. Looks like everybody's yeah. getting their votes in here. Yeah. All right. 
Awesome. Thank you. So it looks like we have half and half. Some of you are regularly taking attendance or supervising someone. Other, others of you are not, but maybe that'll change in the future after learning about it today and the new, the new updates. So thank you for participating in the poll. Okay, so here's our homage again to farewell to the cutie apricot and hello to the ugly tree branch. Um, apricot uh, went through some uh, upgrades, um, a lot of them very positive. On June 4th, the new interf interface went live for all sites. So you probably all have noticed all the coloring updates, um, but two significant changes to note as far as functionality. Um, and I'm sure there'll be more to come in the future, but one is role-based permissions. And unfortunately, today we won't have time necessarily to, to go into that and talk about what that'll consist of. But if you already aren't working with one of us to make a plan about how that um, will look like for your organization regarding permissions, um, we're happy to support you however we can. The second significant change is attendance related. So um, previously, if you're using attendance, you, you, we pre-built the system for many of you um, using a forms and what we call the registration grid. Um, now there's a new functionality that's totally separate, um, but it's specifically for attendance tracking and that's called classes and terms and it's an apricot tool. So keep in mind, just wanna call out right away before I get into showing you all, you do not need to migrate to the new attendance system um, right away. We don't know of any plan Social Solutions has to get rid of the registration grid system or the existing attendance tracking system you all might be using. So they're totally separate. Your data is safe in the way that you're existing you're tracking attendance um, currently, but um, you don't, so you don't need to migrate right away. But of course, I'm sure there's going to be benefits to using the new system. As you all see, we really do believe it's easier, it's better. Sarah is a huge fan. So if Sarah says it's amazing, it's amazing. It really is. So hopefully, after you see it today, you'll want to switch over and receive all the upgrades that come with that. Um, I just wanted to make a quick plug with all these updates happening. Um, we are subscribed to the Social Solutions newsletter. So we hear of like the current updates as soon as possible. As administrators, if you want to receive the news as soon as possible, we recommend doing that. And you can do that on their website. But that's how I, uh, that's how we learn um, imminently when new updates are happening. Okay, so why track attendance? Tracking attendance allows you to identify trends in your group services. Um, if you're providing any sort of service to more than one client and you wanna track for reporting to funders or for program efficacy, um, using the attendance tracking system is a wonderful way to do that. There are multiple functionalities. You can use the attendance tracking system to track volunteer hours and engagement, um, using it for staff meetings, using it for one-time community events or outreach. And then of course, um, it's most often associated in my mind at least to workshops, classes, support groups, which we know that's how a lot of you are using it currently. But it, we can think of like creative ways, how can we use this tool to track other um, data points for your organization? So this is a screenshot of the existing version of the attendance tracking system. This is um, what they call the registration grid. So for today, I'm gonna walk you through all the building blocks that go into the registration grid and the current attendance tracking system. Um, I'm not gonna build it live on the training today because we know that for most of you, it's been pre-built um, by Janae or one of us, and you'll probably be moving to the new system. And all of that um, is pre-built. It's not 
based on forms. And um, this is what that looks like. And I will walk through what is involved with setting up a class and tracking attendance with this new functionality. So just a quick overview of what we're gonna cover today with the existing attendance tracking version. We're gonna go over building a form for a group event or class. We're gonna go over the linking re records functionality that's required, as well as what the registration grid is, which is really the bread and butter of attendance tracking with the existing version. For the new version, we're gonna cover setting up your um, classes, terms, and sessions. We're gonna go over what each of those means a little later on, um, but we're gonna cover those various tiers that go into attendance tracking in the new tool, as well as the attendance notes configuration that has been built into the software. And we're really excited about this because with it, it brings some data quality, automatic data quality checks, some systematized ways for you to track data regarding um, attendance. So quickly, for example, instead of just present or absent, they've pre-built options to indicate um, was pre does present mean tardy or excused, things like that. You can tag that attendance data to be more specific. So we're gonna go over both versions today. Lastly, um, I'm just gonna touch on building reports on attendance data, which we know it's very important. You all are putting in the work to get that data in the database, but you wanna see it. You wanna be able to analyze it um, and help it inform your services. So I'm gonna show us um, report building, which you all should be experts on, right? Because Heather <laughs> covered report building, um, but just uh, showing that in the context of attendance data. So today's scenario, two ways. So our overall objective in our apricot building scenario today is to track data for an after-school educational program that operates from June through August this year for clients enrolled in our fictitious Power Up program. So that's our objective using Apricot today. So um, this is the minimal data we need. So of course, if our program wants to track other data points in the future, we can add to this, but this is the, this is the foundational data we need. We need to know the date of our class, the class name, the start and end dates of our class over those three months, the status of our class, is it active or inactive, and then the clients enrolled in that class, of course. Um, and of those clients, we want to know what their name is as well as what their attendance status is. Were they present or were they absent? So that's the data we need. Now we are off to Apricot with that. So we are in our sandbox and um, you will see here that we've named this record class profile. So per our scenario, um, our organization needs to, needs to create a data collection system for a group of students attending an ongoing class over the course of three months. So the first step in doing that is having this tier one record to gather the data points we need. Um, so we called it class profile. Um, we've seen you all call it various things, activity profile, class cohorts, training or orientation. Um, they're all collecting um, similar things in the sense that it's, it's tracking service provided to multiple clients or multiple individuals at once. Um, but it's based on a tier one record. So clicking into our class profile, you'll see from our search view, um, this is our list of classes based on this form in the database. And you see here that the name, the start end date, the status, and uh, the links are all set to quick view fields. As you all know, if we wanna add or detract 
and from anything that's in this search view, you designate the field as quick view. So I learned something from Janae recently that by making this linking field a quick view, it tells us that, for example, five links were made to our 2021 STEM after school class, meaning that five client intakes were linked to that this class or five participants enrolled in this class. So it's a way to quickly identify that information from this search, um, from this search view. So going in and opening our, this class record that I've pre-built, this is what we see. We see two sections right away. We see class details up at the top with the data points that we wanted to collect. And the second section here includes the linking field. This is where we enroll we enrolled our participants. So you'll see here that I have five client intake profiles linked to this class record. So five participants enrolled. The link is indicated as active here. It says when the link was made or when the in, uh, client was enrolled in this class. So, so um, when creating a new form and enrolling participants for the first time, um, you're not going to see this take attendance button under record options. So to show you what that looks like, when I click into new class profile, so I want to document a new class for our organization, you're not going to see that take attendance option um, until you hit save record. And of course, you want to enroll your participants before you take attendance. So I just wanted to call that out because um, it, it took me a while to realize that as well. Just moving my Zoom buttons around. So let's go back. Um, and I just wanted to show you what this looks like from the front end, these two sections here. But I want to show you now what it looks like on the administrator. Um, side the back end of the form. So going into our class profile record and clicking on edit, this is what it looks like from the back end. So of course we have our class details, our enrolled participants section with the linking field. We also have the registration grid. So that's what this third section is. You'll see on the right here under field choices, you have a button that says registration. That's what creates the register, registration grid. So by clicking on that, it populates a new section with the registration grid embedded in it. And you need a few things to set up this attendance system. So one of the components you need is the class profile, the tier one record. The second component you need is the record of the clients you're attaching to this class profile. So most often that's going to be your tier one client intake. So that, those are the first two components. The third is the tier two record that's going to store attendance data attached to your client intake. So I will show you what that also what that looks like on the back end. So going into standard forms, under our client intake, we have a tier two class attendance record. And we have to create that before we can set up the registration grid system. So going into the record, we have to have a couple fields and they have to be set up a certain way for this attendance tracking system to work. So they all these fields have to be designated as quick view. One of them has to be the date of attendance. And then we want to track attendance status, of course. So this is where we will indicate how we want to attract, uh, designate that attendance status. So present, absent, partial attendance, that's what I want to um, track in this case. I also put a notes field here to enter any attendance data that we want to collect. And again, they all have to be quick view to uh, show up in our registration grid. 
So this is what that tier two class attendance record will look like. So we already have our client intake. We create the tier two class attendance record. And then the third component is the tier one class profile or workshop um, profile or whatever you call it to track the group attendance. So going to the back end again of our class profile, and I just wanna um, show you what the registration grid field properties look like. And again, I might, I might be going a little quick and I'm, I'm, I apologize, or I might be glossing over it. It's only because that there's this new version of tracking attendance that we know you're all probably gonna be migrating to. I just wanted to show you the building blocks of what goes into building it. And I hope it's helpful in understanding how it's set up in the database. So when I open up the field properties of the registration grid, this is where we designate the schedule. We have only a couple options for every day, weekdays only. You can set up custom dates. It's very difficult and it's not worth explaining on this call. Typically, we indicate it as weekdays only and you can adjust the date in the registration grid and I will show you that. So this is here, these drop downs are where you indicate the three components to set up the registration grid. So we have the, the linking field indicating that we're connecting the client intake tier one record to this tier one class profile record. And then the registration grid is gonna be populated by the tier two class attendance record that I just show you. So those fields are gonna, are gonna be what shows up in the registration grid. And then as I said, you have to have one date field. So date of attendance is our date field that's gonna show up in the registration grid. And once you create that date field, you'll see it's now grayed out when I open that class, tier two class attendance. Um, if you wanna disable that, you have to contact social solutions, but that's just the way the registration grid works. You set up that date field and then it's, it's placeholded there. So back to the field properties, you'll see that there's a special property called hide field labels. This has to do with how the data is displayed in the registration grid. And oftentimes we've heard from clients like, the, the label on the registration grid isn't appearing the way it should be. I believe this comes auto-checked, so the label on the registration grid isn't showing, if that makes sense. I think it's like the date label, Janae, correct me if I'm wrong, um, that doesn't show, um, but it's not intuitive. So I just wanted to call this out in case you look at your registration grid and you're like, I don't, I don't know what this is trying to tell me. So go make sure that this is unchecked. Allow users to update all columns at once or all rows at once. For those of you who use the registration grid for attendance tracking, I'll pull it up in a second. There's a column um, or a row that you can update all the clients at once to all be present or all be absent. That's what that is. And usually um, the user has a preference on which of these they like, whether they wanna update the rows all at once or the columns all at once. That's what that is. So I just wanted to call that out and show you, but that those are the components that go in to building the registration grid. So, um, one other important thing that I failed to mention at the top is what the registration grid allows you to do is to update multiple tier two records at once. So if you're in, if you have, let's go to the, the front end. So you have your class profile and you click into your class. And we have five enrolled participants. All five of them have a tier two class attendance record. And what 
taking attendance using the registration grid does and it updates all of the tier two class attendance records at once for all five of these participants. So that's the purpose of the registration grid. It's to do a batch update of all these tier two records. So I hope that makes sense. So now that I've showed you the components that go into building it, let's take attendance and see what that looks like. So I'm gonna click into the take attendance button and fun fact, um, what shows up on this take attendance button is on the back end, what the section um, is called. And let me show you that. So on the back end, in your class profile, this section called take attendance, if I rename it, Helen is cool and click apply and click publish. Let me delete this section I added first so that it'll let me publish it. Have to remove the field before I delete the section. Cool. Thanks. Okay. So publish, Helen is cool. That's what I renamed our section. So now I'm gonna click refresh. <gasps> Look, our button is called Helen is cool now. I think that's so powerful. I wish I could update all the buttons in the system to say Helen is cool, but I can't, only that one. So nifty call out in Apricot, what you name the section in your class profile is what will show up in the button. So it's usually gonna be named take attendance because you want it to be intuitive to your user. How do you take attendance? So by clicking on that button, it pulls up the registration grid. And this is the current existing attendance tracking mechanism in Apricot. Um, I wanna call out here that you have to select the date you're taking attendance for. It's gonna auto-populate to the current date. So today, June 10th, it's pulling up June 10th. But oftentimes you're taking attendance after your class, um, you're going back into the database and entering that data. Of course, best practice is to do it day of, but we understand like, I wanna take attendance for June 5th. So I'm gonna select June 5th, and then you have to click update. And now you see that you're taking attendance for June 5th. So this is the row at the top I called out previously where you can update all five participant records at once. You'll see I have my notes field and I have my attendance status drop down. So I can indicate present for all my participants and you'll see it'll autofill present for all of them. And if you have 20 participants, this is helpful than individually clicking into each one. And then I can go make adjustments to individual records as needed. So that is the registration grid. Um, you know, my tip, my number one tip is to just make sure you're taking attendance for the correct date. That wasn't obvious to me when I first started using it. It's, it's small, you know, it's auto-populating to the current date. I'm sure there is a way around that in that custom date setup. Um, but as I said, it's very difficult to set up and it's not worth showing you all today, especially with this new functionality that the database has now. So I've taken attendance for June 5th. Now I'm gonna click save record and it'll say registration saved. I'm gonna go back into my record I'm gonna click into one of my participants um, into their client intake profile, click on view folder, and you'll see here that one of their tier twos is the class attendance record. By unhiding that, I can see their historic attendance data. So how many days they were present, and you'll see here that they're linked to one class. So this is how at a quick glance, 
you can view attendance data with the registration grid. Wonderful. So now at this point, um, I want to go back to our slides to talk about some definitions on the new attendance tracking system. So new apricot terminology. So they're calling this new functionality attendance tracker. There's three components to this new attendance tracker. There are classes. This is the broadest category to capture client services slash meetings that reoccur over time with a different group of participants. So for example, that could be a parenting support group, that could be after school mentoring, English language learning. It's the broadest, most static category are your classes. Secondly, and very importantly, there's the terms. This is how you configure those classes. So this is the specific iteration of your class. So it includes the duration of the class. So how many days or weeks the class runs. It also includes the location. You're gonna designate what is successful attendance. And we'll talk more about that in a second. And it will have the roster of all the participants enrolled in your term. So a term example could be summer 2021 or session two or cohort five for your class. And your class could have 10 terms. So you can set that up in this new functionality. And then the third component is sessions. So sessions are individual classes within a term. So they built this um, in the case that you wanna take attendance um, more than once a day. So the way they set up the example they use um, is morning session or afternoon session. So it can be used to track a block of time. Another way you can use sessions, and you'll see in a second when I take us to Apricot, is you can track class topics by using the sessions feature. So I just wanted to call out what these three components are um, outside of Apricot, because I'm a visual person and seeing it helps me. So going back into Apricot, you, as I said, this new attendance functionality is completely separate from the registration grid that's built on your forms. Classes and terms is currently only available to administrators and standard users. We know that this is a, a drawback to this new functionality, it not being available to guest users because we know that guest users can often be the ones taking attendance if they're teachers or volunteers and they have limited access to the database. This could change in the future. It sounds like Social Solutions is very aware of this limitation, but currently it's just administrators and standard users. Um, this functionality is currently available to Apricot Core and 360, which I believe most of you are. Apricot Essentials doesn't have this functionality right now. So you will see it in your Apricot under My Apricot Tools from the front end um, user perspective. It is called Classes and Terms. Not very intuitive, but that's what it's called. You will see this pencil icon up here if you are an administrator. If you are a standard user, you won't see it. And this is called um, the uh, class configuration or the feature configuration, I should say. So this is where you indicate what tier one record um, you wanna populate the attendance tracker with. So I wanna populate my attendance tracker with my client intake profile. So it's telling the database what record we wanna pull the information from. We do have to indicate one name field. So client name is an obvious one. They also require 
a, another quick view field. The reason they set that up to be required is to account for participants that might have the same name. But um, in this instance, I'm gonna pull up their preferred method of contact as that second required quick view field. You'll scroll down and you'll see that with this new functionality, you have the um, option to attach or pull in multiple two tier one records um, in the attendance tracking system. So this can be used if you wanna attach a parent and a child to the attendance tracking system. So two separate tier one records or a mentor and a volunteer. So this is, this is the added feature of this functionality. So going back um, to our list of classes here. So the classes table is what they call us, call this, um, shows us all the classes, previous or in progress. So we see the name of the class, we automatically see the status, the total terms, and the terms in progress. So if your STEM after school class has two terms, fall and summer, and you're in progress of the summer term, that's what that this is meant to indicate. And then you have your I, um, you click on the I to open up the record, and you have what is called a kebab. This, those three dots, it's called a kebab. I don't know why, but learn something new every day. This is how you can delete a class. Important thing to note, if you all watch or you're part of this training today and you're like, I'm gonna go set up my classes right away and put in my terms and start taking attendance, love the enthusiasm. Keep in mind, it'll give you the ability to delete a class and that'll delete your data with it. So there's no safeguards right now with this new functionality. So you could, if you start populating with data and then someone accidentally deletes it, you'll lose your data. So keep that in mind. I suspect that will change in the future, but this is just like a brand new software update and they're gonna keep making adjustments to it. So just wanted to call that out. Um, yeah, the active or inactive status will um, help indicate which classes are historic classes and are no longer being used. And then just know that the classes are sortable and searchable, which is cool up here. So now I'm gonna take us into um, creating a new class and see what that looks like. So now we have our class details up top. Um, we can indicate the name of our class, put in a description. It will auto-populate to attach all sites within your database have access to this class. You can, of course, delete the sites you don't want to have access to this class. So this is where you attach the sites to the class. In the term is where you designate the program that will have access to the class. But sites is um, indicated in class details, as well as the status being active or inactive. So I'm gonna click into the class that I pre-built. Clicking on that I icon, you can of course make edits to the class details after the fact. Once you create a class, um, it'll pull up the terms table. So this is the list of the terms that I have established for this class. I can click on new term and this is what this looks like. So. The term shows you the different offerings of the class. Um, and this is where we indicate the name. So cohort one. And as I said, the term is where you designate which program in your database this class is attached to. And based on what program you determine is how you will um, get to choose the list of participants that are enrolled in that program. 
versus any participant across the database. So it has some automatic um, viewer permissions built into this new attendance system, which is kind of cool. So term dates, you have two options here between reoccurring dates or specific dates. Um, so I love this about this new system. As you all saw on the registration grid, it was very difficult to set certain dates. It's easy to make a mistake. With this setup, you can choose, you know, I want this class to run once a week for three months. Choose which day, the start and end date, the start and end time of your class. Keep in mind, all of these are reportable. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second in the report. But it's already set up to collect all these data points. If you choose reoccurring date, you can choose select days off in case there's a holiday or a snow day. And you can add that um, to your list. And you'll see I choose June 3rd, and it adds it to the select days off here. If this is a one-time event you're trying to track, you can choose, I wanna run an event on February 5th, you choose specific date and that's, that's that. Scrolling down, this is I think one of the biggest value adds of the new functionality. It's term completion criteria. Um, so, Term completion criteria. As a user, you can tell the database what constitutes successful attendance. So you can check whether you wanna use this or not, but you have two options to indicate a percentage or a specific number of classes that makes, that will result in good attendance for your participants. So if this scenario is a court mandated class or uh, a cohort where you want your provi providers to attend 90% of the sessions or classes to be deemed successfully completing the program, this is where you indicate that. Or if it's a summer camp series and you have 10 classes, you can say um, participant marked as present a minimum of eight out of 10 classes makes them successful in their attendance record. You'll see here a checkbox for enable risk indicator. So what this is telling the database is how close or far from the needed completion criteria for a particular term a participant is. So the database is doing some math on the back end of you've selected the days of your term and it's gonna tell you, is your participant on track to successfully complete the program by what you've indicated up here. So if you're telling Apricot, eight out of 10 is successful attendance, by checking enable risk indicator, it's gonna tell you, is the participant at risk or behind, or are they on track to successfully have good attendance with this term? So I know that's a lot of information, but hopefully when I show you a visual of what this is gonna look like with reporting, um, it's helpful. So I think this is an amazing way to use the data um, as in regards to attendance to tell you how are your participants doing as far as engaging in this group service. Okay. So um, I next, I wanna show you sessions, what sessions look like. So I'm gonna click into the summer 2021 term. This is the attendance table. So I created this class, I set the term, I set the days, and now I can take attendance. This is the attendance table. You'll see here, we have the option to enroll participants. I pre-enrolled five participants, but based on what program you've selected for your term, it'll pull up a list of the participants enrolled in that program. I just simply click 
on Jessica Day to enroll her in our program. And click save. And um, it'll pull up Jessica Day now in our attendance table. You're only able to take attendance on the days that you set up in your term. So Monday, June 7th is grayed out because I didn't indicate that as being one of the days in my in the terms in the I set up. So you'll see here, um, this is how we take attendance. Green check mark being present, red X being absent. Based on what you choose, you can pull up the attendance notes. And I referenced this earlier, but the attendance tag based on what you choose. So I chose jo Joseph was absent. Now I can indicate, was he excused or was he suspended? These attendance tags are pre-built with this functionality. So there's no customization that I know of with the attendance tags, but that could change in the future. Um, you can select activities as well as um, quick notes. So let me back up and show you what the setup of those looks like. So you'll see by clicking on the kebab, I'm gonna pull up my attendance note setting. This is where I can designate the activities or the quick notes that I wanna pre-populate into the system um, so that my user, the users can take attendance in a uniformed way and maintain data quality. So um, I can designate here if I wanna display that attendance tag. So tardy, makeup, if they were present or excuse suspended if they were absent, that's the attendance tagging. So I can say, I wanna use that. Time in and time out is obvious. You can indicate um, the physical time the participant was there. Display activity options. So currently you can add up to five, at only five activities and you can customize what those activities are. So this is where you can indicate what happened at that class. Um, so for this educational class, the STEM after school scenario, I could say, I wanna create one of the activities to be study group, get a guest speaker. This is how easy it is to add an activity. Um, let's see, what could another activity be? Um, science experiment. So I can only add up to five right now, unfortunately. Um, that could change again as Social Solutions makes updates to this software. Um, but I can pre-add these activities and add them to um, my enrolled participants. Quick note options. So this is another kind of alternative to activity options. Um, let's say I wanna add a quick note that says, participant was engaged um, during this class or workshop. Um, this could be a quick note that our program um, decides ahead of time, and we can add this quick note to each of our participants enrolled in the class as it's relevant. So this is where you make customizations to those. Going back to display options, um, we can choose to display the activity options and display the quick notes. So these are the configurations you can make to the attendance note settings. So going back to the attendance table, that's what that this pencil on top of the little square is, is where we add those attendance um, note, set, note options. Another call out is you'll see at the top here, this is your option for marking all of them. So five participants, it's not a big deal going through each one. If you have 50 participants enrolled in your class or activity, you can mark them all at once. It will override any individual data. So um, decide up top if you wanna do this or not, but you do have that option. Um, now I wanna show you sessions. So I pre-built 
three sessions here based on subject matter. So for my STEM after school class, I pre-built a human biology, astronomy exploration and physics experiment session. I can make customizations to sessions. You can technically add as many as you want by clicking on session manager. This is what that looks like. Click on the pencil icon, make adjustments. As I said, when Social Solutions built this option, they thought of it as taking attendance on more than one time block. So morning session, afternoon session, which I think is why they called it sessions. <laughs> um, but it can also be used to designate and then report on what class covered what subject. So sessions can be used that way. Let me move our Zoom faces. Sorry, my head, click out, go away. Okay, um, so th those are our sessions. Just make sure when you're taking attendance and you have multiple sessions that you clicked into the correct one. By default, you only have one session for one class. So I went and added these but you, by default, you just have one session for one class. So, showed you attendance notes. I wanna show you what unenrolling a participant looks like. So by clicking on the kebab next to, so funny kebab, next to the person's name, you have two options. You can view the participants folder. So I clicked on the view um, participant and pull up their uh, document folder, or I can unenroll the participant. So if I click unenroll, the software um, pre-populated these options to, to identify unenrollment reasons. So no longer meets criteria, moved, relocated. These aren't currently customizable. In the future, that could change, but um, they set these unenrollment reasons. And if you click unenroll, it'll just cross off your participant. And if you hover over the exclamation mark, it'll show you what day they were unenrolled. So um, I know one of the questions you all might have is about importing attendance data. Um, and in, um, currently, there is no way to mass import attendance data into this functionality. So I just wanna call that out. Um, also, Social Solutions is working on creating a button um, within the client document folder to enroll them in a class from their document folder or their client, the tier one uh, record you're indicating to populate the attendance grid. Currently not a feature yet, but something that could come in the future. So that is classes and terms. Classes, terms, sessions. Comes pre-built, it's very easy to customize. Um, I hope you all are excited about it. Um, I wanna transition now to what the data looks like in a report. So going to administrator tab, clicking on report center, reports. So I wanna show you what it looks like pulling in attendance data with the registration grid version, as well as with the new attendance tracking system. So we know how important it is to report and look at the data that you're putting in the database. So I, wanted to show you, I pulled in first the client intake data to show, so you'll see that up here, um, client intake, class profile data, as well as the tier two class attendance data. I made a filter based on the 2021 STEM after school class. It's now showing me the enrolled participants. Um, I grouped by the student name, um, it's showing their date of attendance and I grouped by their attendance status. So it's showing, you know, 
how many times was each participant present, partially attended or absent. Um, Jerome is a overachiever, obviously. Um, but that's registration grid example of pulling in data. Um, I wanna call out what it looks like now. I'm sorry, it's probably so small for you all, but with the new classes and terms apricot tool, you'll see that they added attendance tracker in this list of field choices. So by clicking on this carrot, you'll see all the fields within the attendance tracker that you could pull into a report. So it works the same way as pulling in any other field from forms, um, which is neat. It's not the most organized right now, but you'll see you can pull in on enrollment date, on enrollment reason, term information, class information, as well as this risk status. So as we talked about, are they um, on track to successfully complete based on that risk indicator? Um, so I just wanna show you pulling that into the report. We don't have anything like pre-populated with data to show the risk status, but I just wanted to show you this is what that would look like in a report. Um, and hopefully this risk indicator is something helpful when tracking um, client data. And I also created a section to show attendance tracker um, data example of, again, pulling in client information, grouping by attendance status, indicating their term and their session and the class name. So this is what it looks like to build a report based on the attendance data. Just want to call out with the new system. It takes currently one day or overnight to report on the attendance data you put in the system. So if I use the classes and terms functionality today and populate it with attendance data, I can't go pull a report on it till tomorrow, which is a limitation. They're working on that. So going back to our slides, um, it looks like we're gonna have some time. Are there any questions while I'm in Apricot before I hop back to our slides? from anyone? If not, that's cool. Helen, there was a question about, um, uh, for unenrolling, if you hit other, is there a text box field? And so that seems like something maybe we mm, could try. Question. And see what happens. Yeah, I don't know, let's see. And enroll, other, nope, no, nope. and there's no way to change that. That's all like pre-set up by social solutions. Could change. I know I keep saying that a lot. Could change in the future. So is the way with software updates. <laughs> um, good question. Any others? This might, related to that point, this might be a good time to call out that um, in Apricot, there's a portal for submitting ideas and they really do pay quite a bit of attention to those ideas. Um, you can vote on other people's ideas that have already been entered. And so for brand new functionality like this, I think they watch it pretty closely. So if there's um, features that you you really want or you wanna, um, something that doesn't exist yet, but you it would be really meaningful if you can, um, make that visible and give examples for why that's so important to you, they really do pay attention to it. So for this new functionality, uh, that's one way to have your voice heard. Excellent point, Sarah. I pulled out that that submit an idea and someone was giving feedback on the color scheme. So it's true, it does sound like they do listen to, to feedback. So yes, do, do self-advocate since you're using database. Well, if there's no other questions, I'll jump back into our slides. So I just wanted to call attention to the power of reporting on attendance data. 
This is an example um, that Janae built based on monthly um, class sessions. Um, and it's showing for each month, what does the attendance date look like? Um, designated as present and absent. And if you were to, un to unhide these um, uh, date categories of the classes, you'd see the list of participants and be able to click into their record and see their attendance data. Um, so reporting on attendance data is very possible um, and we're fans. So if we can work with you to do that, we're happy to. So in learning about this new functionality, this is an image of what is coming down the road eventually as far as updates to the software. This is an image of a client document folder with the classes and terms data in it with the, you'll see the on track, at risk, um, complete good attendance records. This is a future enhancement. So none of you are gonna see it today in your apricots, but it's, it's nice to know that they're already thinking about how can we attach the client information to their attendance data with this new functionality. So I hope that these things come soon. So a lot of information, what's our recommendation moving forward? Um, we encourage you all to think about um, when your program would like or organization would like to transition from using the existing registration grid to track attendance, if you are, to the new attendance tracker tool. They do operate separately. So again, there's no pressure to do that right away but we do encourage you to make that transition. Um, your historical data within the registration grid and the, the um, forms we built to track that data is safe. It's not going anywhere. Um, we don't know of a way to easily migrate it or import it and to make the, new, the two systems talk to each other, but um, let's work together if that's something that we can help you with. Um, also to begin thinking about what constitutes on track attendance versus at risk. So you can use this functionality when you make that um, transition to the new tool um, because we think it'll, it'll really help inform your attendance data. Um, last point here is just that you may experience glitches and they're gonna, there's gonna be ongoing enhancements to the software. So hang in there. Um, great responsibility and power comes with being an apricot administrator. So we know it's, it's going to come with changes and we appreciate you learning alongside of us. Any questions, concerns, thoughts? I have a question maybe just to get um, things started. Uh, for any of you, have you had particular, has anyone had particular challenges with using uh, attendance tracking, maybe uh, probably in the old way, because the, the new way is brand new, um, specific challenges or uh, huge wins from being able to, to track it or uh, making that more accessible? No challenges with the existing attendance tracking? That's good. Yeah, what I'm hearing is said it's perfect. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Mel. You're good. <laughs> I have a super specific <laughs> thing that irks me. Like, it's just so gigantic that, and then the date doesn't scroll with you. So then I'm like, okay, what day of the week was it? <laughs> I like how the new one's smaller. Yeah, yeah. the new one is a, a bit more manageable in that, especially if you've got, I mean, if you've got five students, great. You can get them to fit on a screen. If you've got more than that, you're scrolling for 45 minutes and 
you end up having to scroll back up and forth all the time just to remember what you're doing. How do you all feel about the new functionality? Do you like it? Thumbs up. Thumbs For down. those of you who are just getting into Apricot, I'm really excited that you don't have to do the old way. You just get to do the new way because that having the hybrid is going to be tricky for a few folks. So for those who are just in the beginning of this, yay for you. I also really like the, um, the at risk math feature built in. Um, it's way simpler, like it's already set up. You just have to enter the percentage and it'll eventually, uh, there will be easy reporting that there's still some, they're still figuring that out and giving the, the nice uh, visual on that. But um, I think that's a really nice feature because that's a common use case. Uh, typically with classes, there there is a requirement about what is considered passing or not, or what is successful. And to have that baked in, um, I think is really nice and will become really, really valuable once we get used to using that. Have you all looked at this on mobile? I haven't. I just know no. we're going back to so many in-person classes now. And, you know, it's one thing to fill this all in on your computer when you're sitting in front of a Zoom classroom, but to actually be interacting with kids and then trying to, you know, use this, it definitely looks better, but I'm still, we're still like, how much do we want our instructors to actually do in the system and how much do we, you know, I'm obviously we'd love to do it in there, but I'm, I'm super curious because I'm imagining instructors trying to do it on their phone and wondering what it's going to be like. Yeah, I'm looking right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I got this. I will show you in just a second. <laughs> Phones are so big now, you're practically doing it on a tablet anyway. Okay, let's look. Well, I'm, you can't see it, but it's not as bad as you would think for how little the buttons are. And because it has a really good zoom in, zoom out functionality, it's actually not that bad on a phone. Like it's really clear. Um, it looks exactly the way that it would on your computer. It's just the little version. So I think that if needing to take attendance on a phone or tablet is kind of part of the way that you're going to take attendance, I can see it being successful. I had a question for you all related to last session. Um, for those of you who did log in and see the homework, um, the homework was asking whether or not, or if you are interested in joining an apricot learning group. And so our idea behind that is eventually our time with you all is going to end. Um, we're sad about it too. Um, and we'll always be available to you. Like, it's not like you can't email us anymore, <laughs> but we wanna give you the opportunity to start learning from each other. Um, you know, you all use Apricot regularly. You all ask us similar things and run into similar obstacles. So using each other, especially as the people running your programs, like we're pretty external and a lot of it is, tell us more, explain what you mean. Like, you know your programs, so having each other to kind of bounce around would be, I think, really beneficial to you all. So I believe Heather sent out um, a reminder to everyone from the Apricot Connect portal to take the little survey that essentially indicates, would you like to opt into the group? And if so, how? So um, our team personally loves Slack. So if if there's a Slack channel that we're all on where we're like, hey, is anyone else getting this glitch in Apricot? We can communicate together. Um, no pressure, like if you want to rock it by yourself or if you have internal support, great. But I've heard a lot of you say that you're alone on Apricot Island all by yourself in your organizations. And we want to help remedy that because we know how lonely it can be. So giving you a little network of other administrators is something we'd like to offer you. I sent out a, a, a note yesterday through the portal. Um, it probably went to your junk mail. So 
unfortunately, <laughs> check there. Um, but basically it was, it's a link to homework four. So when you log into the portal for homework five today um, with the link above, uh, if you're interested in that, fill out the homework for uh, the for homework four, um, which was a quick survey about uh, interacting in that group learning session. And then today's homework is a, another very simple uh, short survey uh, with the questions that Helen was talking about. Uh, one other thing, oops, uh, was with the new attendance tracker, um, it's not currently available for guest users, which I anticipate for several of you. I know several of you specifically use your guest users for taking attendance. So um, I just submitted an idea to expand that. They mentioned in their um, the launch video of this new feature that uh, they were consider they were waiting to see what the feedback was for guest users. Um, Uh, so if that would be valuable to you, um, that's a link to the idea in the idea portal. Um, they do pay attention to that. It's really helpful if you can give examples of the scenario that you're working in that helps them understand the need and how broad the need might be. Um, so if that is something that is pertinent to you, that is one way to make your voice heard. I just voted on it, thanks. And we apologize in advance. Yeah, we apologize in advance for uh, leading you to the rabbit hole that is apricot suggestions, because once you get started, you are, you will lose a whole day to voting and adding new ideas and like it's, it's a rabbit hole so be prepared. I only go like once a month, so I don't spend too much time in there. How is everyone feeling at large about the changes in apricot? Like, is anyone experiencing any hiccups? Well, we know you're experiencing hiccups. That's not a fair question. But is there anything in particular that is difficult? Like did functionalities kind of disrupt what your home screen looks like or how you use it? Any feedback from us and in ways that we can help set up maybe your home screen or your bulletins in a way that I don't know works better. I've gotten a few error codes that are the HTML, not actually the error code they want me to see. Um, like mm. it should say error section not working, but instead it says, you know, HTML. I'm not <laughs> trying to speak that. Um, or you can well put <laughs> some of the buttons don't align with their words. Like there's some glitches they need to work out. Yeah. Are most of you, ex I mean, and I can't see most of your faces, um, but are most of you, have you hit an error with apricot connect links? Like, is that something that has been pretty consistent? No. Sometimes I have to reload the form. Okay, okay. Yeah, our hope is that that gets fixed quickly because we know that's a functionality that many of you have been using a lot, especially since COVID. So that's kind of high on my list of please fix these glitches. Well, one known glitch um, that we've noticed is when you are building a form and indicate that something should be hidden. The gear in the old way was very clear. It would be one color, it was green when it was visible and gray when it was hidden. In the new branding update, um, it's teal regardless. It doesn't show, you can't see hidden until you open it. That's a bug, it's known, It's wor they're working on it. And that's the same for in report building. And when you include a field to be a column, um, through the gear visibility, what color it is, you know whether it's hidden or not. It will still accurately be visible or hidden in the published version. It's just tricky to see in the builder. And it's known, they're working on it. I have no idea what the timeline is, but um, that will be fixed for sure. This is very random, but since we've got time and I know that a few of you have reached out specifically to ask about this. One of the functionalities that came with the new apricot that we kind of knew, but 
we were like unsure of what it was going to look like. So we didn't want to promise any direct support on it. But now that it's here, we're like, hmm, people are probably going to want this. And that is the apricot schedule functionality. So I think most of you know that old apricot had a thing called my calendar. It was very, um, I didn't find it particularly helpful. It was basically the equivalent of opening your email and toggling to your calendar. Like maybe if you wanted everything in one place, great, but it wasn't particularly helpful. But they have super, super enhanced the calendaring and scheduling functionality. You can actually store all of your appointments by client in Apricot. You can integrate multiple calendars, check your colleagues availability. Um, so it's, it's a much more enhanced version of the calendar and it's more focused on scheduling than it is on actually just looking at your calendar. So if that is something you're interested in, I would suggest coming to office hours or reaching out to us specifically. And if we need to have like a mini admin session where we just talk through scheduling and getting all of that set up, great. Um, and the reason I, I say that is we can't necessarily do that for you. This is a functionality where we you need to put your email password in, things where it gets a little weird with like, I don't know if I want to have access to your email. So I want you to go set that up. And so we can do it together. Um, but it's something that a few of you have asked about. And I just want to make sure that we call that out since we don't have a session dedicated to the schedule function. That would be nice because I've been asked about it as well. Yeah. It's mostly they're like, what's this new button? But it's there. Anything else? We don't have to fill up this time. I mean, I can try to tell you jokes and stuff, but if you want to go, you can go. <laughs> Helen, did you have anything else? No, thank you, Janae and Heather for your additions. <laughs> and um, yeah, we're here for you. So thank you everyone for learning along with us. <laughs>